Hey, right, here we go, tractor tractor. Uh, you notice the Banshee's still in pieces. We're uh, we're getting there. Um, I don't know when the videos are actually gonna come out, but either way, we're gonna work on this for a little bit. Um, I don't know. There was the there's the whole build series, which I'll uh, put in one of the cards uh, for this thing, which I never really finished. It ended with me kind of painting it, I think. Um, never showed it actually driving after it had a throttle hooked up. So there's one clip of it driving. this I never really showed a lot of it like finished and you can watch the whole thing of me building this which those videos are pretty low quality just so you know but either way we have that we have that right there which is a Garrett genuine Garrett not even Chinese T3 off of a Maricor XR4 Ti it's a 0.48 exhaust housing this is a 2 liter and uh she should spool pretty pretty decent on this motor. Um, so yeah, this makes about 130 horsepower to the crank stock, which is this is a Suzuki J20A. Um, so we're hoping to put about 200 horse to the crank. Maybe I was watching uh, dyno videos of uh, trackers and sidekicks um, with this motor, and that turbo on about 10 psi was making 200 to the wheels which I don't want to quite run 10 psi I believe that's what the wastegate spring is in it but because we're uh, we're gonna uh, run a fifth injector I don't know if I'm gonna make a new intake or not if I feel like it I wanted to make a more compact one with shorter runners which the low end power that this gives you with the long runners isn't really required here but I wanted to make it a little more compact because this thing is supposed to have side panels to uh, enclose it really um, from the factory it did I've never had them you know, I was gonna make some but either way just gotta find a spot for the turbo because I don't want it sticking out too far because I want to be this to be a sleeper tractor as I can um, if I didn't have to have the fuel tank here I would love to put the turbo in the middle so that the way the exhaust would work out would be beautiful I just don't have anywhere to put fuel there's not much room in the back um, probably can't see see in there too well but the drive shaft and all that's right there in the way and uh, there just really isn't much room I mean there's a little bit under the seat like in the back if I wanted to make like multiple tanks it would only you come up to about two gallons that's a five gallon tank which I like for long distance because someday this may be street legal so I have some new front tires for it right here um, now these are the same size technically as the fronts on here even though they're they look wider they're listed as the same size which I don't really mind so these are DOT approved tires they're not trailer tires they're uh because they don't say for trailer use only so they will be legal rear tires are legal those are just you know rear end and everything out of there so Eventually, someday. We are putting front brakes on it. Alright, here we go. I think that's better. I don't know. Either way, I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, I think this is this general area is going to be the best location for the turbo. Because I don't want... Yes, I could make this easily make this manifold have a flange right there. Mount it there like it would be in a car. But the thing is, I don't have... I want to keep everything in because it's getting side panels and I don't want to have to make them bulge out too far. So the turbo being in here does create some challenges, but it's not going to be that bad. So this this manifold, uh, I'll cut that there, This because this is a factory manifold, cut that there um, and we'll bring it over and uh, the issue I have is that this turbo was designed to be mounted on the other side of the engine with the exhaust coming out that side which it bolted on like this and this was the downpipe. I don't want to 
have to make something new for for this. This is just a nice two bolt simple flange there. Much easier than trying to bolt onto the turbo outlet. And I can't really clock these individually like however I want because I'm keeping the internal wastegate. So I don't wanna I don't wanna buy an external wastegate because it's another fifty bucks on the project. So the inlet being here means that we need a pretty ge generous radius there to not kill flow which yes it's gonna stick out a little bit but it's not gonna stick out more than much more than the alternator and I think I'm just gonna have the the side panel kind of have a cutout for just the pipe and it'll be black there and orange and I think it'll look alright then that will give me a path for the charge pipe up that way and over to the other corner where that has to be. Uh, we're not going to run an intercooler, I don't think. I don't think we need that, and I don't have room for it anyway. Um, and the, I have to get coolant over here, which I have the old heater core hoses on the other side, which will work good. Then oil feed I can get out of right there, so that's not going to be too bad. Then the drain, I'm going to have to go into the pan probably uh, out the bottom and all that. Okay, so we got this bar out, cut out of here. I don't know if the camera shut off because the battery died, but when I cut it, the thing sprung over like it was pretty stressed or something. Alright, so uh, we, we got this tacked on the with the, uh, I don't even want to call it a welder, one of the 90 amp uh, flux core welders. And, uh, we got our we got our welding wire, it's probably hard to see. <laughs> we got the welding wire in there, I don't have a roll that fits that, I only got a 10 pound spool, so. Yeah, we're just going to tack it down here, because I'm stuck out in the barn with no, no access to real welders, so. Once this is tacked up and mocked up, then I'll bring it up and tag it, maybe. And, uh, yeah. I didn't really want to tag weld this stuff, because, I mean, I cleaned it up a little. You can see that. I had to shut all, I had to shut the lights off, and, well, I have to shut the main lights off, too, when I weld, otherwise I don't have enough service. But, yeah, so this, we're going to cut this off straight right there, and then cut off a section of this radius, so... It'll have a smooth S-bend here. It's not really the way I wanted to do this, but whatever. Smooth S-bend there, and then our um, angle piece is going to go on to the end of this guy there with the flange. Which is that disaster there, which was going to be nicer, but it didn't work, so I'm not making another one. We can fix that. Yeah. Alright, uh, we're finally mocked up. It took a lot of messing with it. Um, but, yeah, that's essentially how it's going to sit, I guess. I mean, I would like to have done something better, but without relocating the fuel tank and changing a whole bunch of things, that's the best I can do. I mean, it would have been better off the have a flange off the manifold up here and I guess a stack that would have actually worked pretty well but I want side panels sleeper luck so that's all going to be packed in nice uh, the exhaust housing has tons of room from the transmission so with the blanket on here and heat shield on here this is going to turn into a fuel cell so that should be that should be quality um, so basically I'm just going to tack that flange down here and then I can TIG, TIG weld the rest of this together and uh yeah. It actually the fitment's better than it than I expected. And I'm probably I'll sandblast all this and then um probably use this heat paint again and uh then how to wrap over that. So I just want to keep as much heat out of in here as I can, especially once the panels are on there, although they'll be vented. And, uh, well, I mean, you can tell, the, the, this, I take everything out of the scrap pile because I ain't buying nothing for it, so. Charge pipe is probably going to be steel as well because I'm, I'm not buying aluminum and couplers and all that junk. I, this, this is all cheap, cheap with this, so. Okay, there we go. We're all tacked and ready to tag.
Oh, I almost got the ground up. I almost shocked myself again. Oh. All right, I tried to film the welding, but the camera died, of course. I don't know if there's anything left of that clip. I'll throw it in just because, but... Um, I, I did have a clip of, of this thing making turbo noises, so... I'll toss that in. This video is just a jumbled mess here. Anyway. Um, I did get a feed line hooked up, which that was a factory feed line. Right to where the oil pressure sender used to be. So working on the, getting the drain hooked up, um, so I'm just about to pull the oil pan off. Um, down here, just getting ready to get all of our bolts off for of that guy, and uh, we're going to weld a fitting to that. Get that good. I don't know if I have the, the uh, fitting here. I don't know. I did. It's a, it's a burner tube out of a grill. Oh, here it is. Here it is. So I'm, I'm just going to cut the fresh part there to there. There's no holes in it. And we're, I'm just going to run a little, little tiny bead around there since I don't have a bead roller. And there's our one fitting. There's our hose, which it's like 5 eighths or a little bigger, which is good for a drain. And I'll get another burner tube. Do the same thing. I'll have to make a flange for the bottom of the bottom of the turbo because I don't have one but it's easy to do then it'll be able to run and at least move around in here so the banshee's gonna be ready soon so here we go yeah we found this stuff outside I thought it was used full synthetic it's actually new I almost put it in the oil burner <laughs> 